The idea of taking humanity beyond our planet to a destination like Mars is not just an adventure. It's a cosmic scale revolution. Amid the uncertainties and risks, we envision a future where artificial intelligence and cutting edge engineering come together to turn dreams into reality, paving the way for a new era of space exploration. This journey is filled with obstacles, but also offers opportunities to rethink our relationship with the universe and with life itself. In 1972, the space race was officially declared over when NASA sent the last crew to the moon during the Apollo 1 mission. After that, many speculations emerged about the future course of space exploration. For many, the answer seemed clear. Mars. Along with Venus, the red planet is the most similar to Earth in several ways. Yet it remains an incredibly inhospitable place. Still, Mars is a paradise compared to Venus, which suffers from a brutal greenhouse effect that results in almost unbearable scorching temperatures. Even so, a manned mission to Mars would face countless obstacles that would need to be analyzed and resolved in advance, including the fundamental challenge of safely transporting the crew both there and back. The tragedies involving the Challenger and Columbia space shuttles, for example, served as stark reminders of how every detail must work perfectly for a spacecraft to leave Earth and return without mishap. Engineers and scientists meticulously calculate thousands of potential failures that could occur during a spaceflight, and going to Mars only intensifies these risks due to the immense distances and extremely dangerous conditions. Just designing a spacecraft that can enter and exit Mars' unstable atmosphere is, in itself, an enormous challenge. Despite the challenges, some well-founded plans already exist to get us there. SpaceX, for instance, has been developing very concrete projects to visit the Red Planet, including ambitious ideas to transport up to a million people to Mars in the coming decades. To make that viable, everything must be perfectly in place when the first humans step on Martian soil, and one of the keys to that is the application of artificial intelligence. Although planning for a trip to Mars has advanced remarkably, it still remains a distant dream about 55 million kilometers away, posing many dangers for those willing to take on this interplanetary journey. Before we begin, please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any updates. Also, don't forget to click like and leave your thoughts in the comments. To start, the first problem is the journey itself. Every two years, a window opens between Earth and Mars when the two planets come closer together. Space agencies usually take advantage of this opportunity to launch missions. But even in this favorable condition, the distance remains enormous. 55 million kilometers, requiring over 250 days of travel. So far, no human has ever covered anything even close to that distance. We don't know exactly how our bodies would react to being away from Earth for so long in such an uncertain environment. This situation can lead to various psychological issues, such as stress, depression, and anxiety. Although astronauts are rigorously trained to withstand these pressures, a mission of this magnitude has never been attempted. In addition, people need constant social interaction to maintain emotional balance, and spending months confined with the same group drastically limits the options for distraction and stress relief. In space, you can't just step out for a breather if someone gets upset or has a disagreement with another crew member. It's necessary to stay calm, communicate clearly, and work cooperatively at all times. That said, given human nature, it's hard to imagine that everything would go smoothly without conflicts. Another critical factor is the absence of gravity. While it's fascinating to see images of astronauts floating aboard the International Space Station, our bodies aren't designed to live in microgravity. Over time, the body tends to shed what it's not using, leading to loss of bone density and muscle mass. In practical terms, the body pees its own bones, as some experts jokingly say, because it loses essential minerals since there's no need to support them the same way as on solid ground. To counteract this effect, astronauts on the space station typically devote about two hours a day to intense physical exercise. However, all of this seems minor compared to one of the main obstacles of space exploration, radiation. The cosmos is filled with various types of dangerous radiation. Our sun, for example, is a fusion reactor that emits enormous amounts of X-rays and ultraviolet radiation, along with high-energy protons and atomic nuclei that, if they hit the human body, can damage the nervous system, 
cause radiation sickness, or even increase the lifetime risk of developing cancer. Fortunately, Earth has a powerful magnetic field that acts as an invisible shield, deflecting most of these charged particles. And the few that make it past this barrier are absorbed by our atmosphere. But in deep space, far from that shield, astronauts are vulnerable. On a mission to Mars, radiation exposure could be up to 700 times greater than on Earth's surface. And the conventional walls of a spacecraft aren't enough to block it all. If they are made too thick to offer extra protection, the added weight makes the mission unfeasible. Despite this, scientists are exploring various solutions, such as installing inflatable shielding that helps absorb some of the radiation, or even using fungi found in Chernobyl, which have certain protective properties. The hope is that soon we'll have an effective method to mitigate the effects of interstellar radiation. After enduring the exhausting 400-day journey to Mars's orbit, more problems await. The first is entering the atmosphere. Of the missions already sent to land there, about half have failed. This happens because Mars's atmosphere is roughly 100 times thinner than Earth's, making it difficult to slow down spacecraft. Typically, unmanned probes that land on Mars use parachutes to reduce speed and then fire rockets for a soft landing. But if we consider a manned mission, with all the necessary life support systems, food, water, and oxygen, the amount of fuel required would be enormous. More fuel means more weight, which in turn requires even more fuel to transport it, potentially making everything impractical with current technology. For safety and functionality reasons, the spacecraft that takes humans to Mars probably won't land immediately. Instead, it will likely remain in orbit, serving as a safe harbor and storing essential supplies for the crew's return journey. Some have proposed, for example, sending a landing module with part of the necessary equipment first, and only later bringing down the astronauts. That way, they could analyze the atmosphere up close to ensure there aren't dust storms or extreme weather conditions at the chosen landing site. Let's imagine everything goes well and the spacecraft lands successfully on the surface. Even then, new challenges arise. On Mars, you can't step out of the craft without a pressurized suit. Its atmosphere is highly toxic to us. About 95% carbon dioxide, 3% nitrogen, and only 0.11% oxygen. Moreover, the atmospheric pressure is extremely low, around 0.6 kilopascals compared to Earth's roughly 101.3 kilopascals. This difference is so drastic that the human body wouldn't hold up. Air pockets would expand, eardrums would rupture, and water in our tissues would start to boil. Walking on Mars would require a suit that not only supplies oxygen, but also maintains proper body pressure. Mars's thin layer of gases also causes heat to dissipate quickly, resulting in temperatures that can drop to minus 220 degrees Fahrenheit. One possible solution to this hostility would be to create an artificial atmosphere on the planet, generating heat and essential gases for life, a process known as terraforming. But that would take hundreds or even thousands of years. We'll dive into that topic in another video. This is just the beginning of a long list of problems. But with constant advances in aerospace engineering, artificial intelligence, and biomedicine, we are likely to get closer and closer to breaking through this barrier and expanding our reach beyond our home planet. Moreover, we all know that Mars no longer has a magnetic field to deflect radiation particles. In other words, even on the planet's surface, the crew would still be exposed to radiation levels much higher than on Earth, though lower than during the journey between the two worlds. Another difficulty is the classic Martian dust storms, clouds of dust that can be driven by winds over 60 miles per hour, strong enough to damage or even destroy temporary installations. To make matters worse, the suspended dust can block sunlight from reaching solar panels, compromising energy production. Now you understand why sending people to Mars isn't simple at all. However, we have one tool that can help overcome almost all the obstacles in humanity's first steps on the Red Planet artificial intelligence. More than just support, in a mission of this scale, AI would be essential for success. Artificial intelligences have always captured the human imagination, but in recent years, they've increasingly surprised us with their rapid progress and the amazing feats they can accomplish. Many people tend to view AI in two extreme ways. It can either save humanity or potentially lead to our downfall. Mars, in turn, would serve as a testing ground to discover how these autonomous systems might operate in a scenario where they are, quite literally, running an entire planet. 
For that to happen, before the first astronauts land, it will be necessary to populate Mars with intelligent robots. Unlike the Moon, where we land, take a few hops, and return in just a few days, the journey to the Red Planet is long and exhausting. When the crew finally arrives, they can't afford to waste time building, organizing, or setting everything up from scratch. They'll need a minimally functional base and immediate assistance on Martian soil. The initial challenge will be transitioning from a zero-gravity environment to a place with roughly one-third of Earth's gravity, which could leave astronauts weakened for hours or even days. Imagine facing that situation confined in a spacecraft with no external help. This is when AI comes into play. Picture autonomous robots, guided by artificial intelligence, welcoming the astronauts on Mars and helping unload supplies, assembling temporary habitats, installing solar panels, and even setting up the first greenhouses. This way, instead of arriving at an entirely hostile location, the crew would have the support they need to adapt to the planet and, consequently, make better use of their time exploring. The key word here is autonomy. Since there's a communication delay of over 10 minutes between Earth and Mars, you can't rely on remote control for every little task. Any detected failure would reach Earth with a delay and then take another 10 minutes for a corrective command to get back to Mars. In 20 minutes, a lot can go wrong. On the other hand, if we can prove on Mars that AI is capable of operating without constant supervision while still remaining efficient and reliable, this technology could develop even faster, benefiting life on Earth as well. The Martian mission, or even the colonization of the planet, will have direct impacts in several fields, including medicine. As mentioned, the journey there could be devastating for the human body, but we won't truly understand the level of risk until we see what happens in practice with people who undergo this prolonged experience. It will be necessary to study the effects of continuous exposure to microgravity, Mars's reduced gravity, and the high levels of radiation found in deep space. Today, astronauts on the International Space Station are still partially protected by Earth's magnetic field. But there will be no such natural barrier on a spacecraft headed for Mars. We know very little about how the body reacts to such prolonged doses of radiation. The only practical experiences we have outside of this protection bubble come from the Apollo project, where astronauts did not show severe radiation effects. Buzz Aldrin, for example, is still relatively healthy in his 90s. However, the Apollo missions lasted only a few days, which is not enough to predict what might happen on journeys lasting months or even years. Despite these risks, scientific research and the technological advances generated by space missions often bring enormous benefits back to Earth. The space program has already contributed to improvements in medical procedures such as laser eye surgery, enhanced breast cancer detection, and advancements in surgical robots, ultrasounds, and pacemakers, among other innovations. Therefore, it's reasonable to believe that a venture to Mars could revolutionize even further the fields of medicine and technology, as well as expand our understanding of human resilience and adaptation in extreme environments. In the end, the next expeditions to the Red Planet will face formidable challenges. Water, extreme cold, unbreathable air, insufficient atmospheric pressure, and constant exposure to radiation. Yet history shows that humanity always reinvents itself to overcome obstacles and explore new territories, finding creative ways to adapt. No one knows for sure what the future holds for our species. There are countless threats here on Earth, be it a supervolcano, an epidemic, or even the collision with an asteroid. An eventual colony on Mars could serve as a backup for humanity, a way of not putting all our eggs in one planetary basket. If you love the mysteries of the universe, Feel free to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and turn on notifications. That way, you won't miss any news about our space journey and the advances that take us ever farther. Thanks for watching. See you on the next trip.